Four months in isolation. Society ground to a halt. Modern humanity has been stationary as never before. The pandemic has given us a new appreciation of our connection to the natural world. But how has lockdown impacted our wildlife? Has our disappearance from gardens and woodlands across the country benefited the species we share our islands with? Across the country, wildlife has emerged. The first to do so at the beginning of spring are birds. And these woodlands in Surrey are alive with song. Birds have done well during lockdown. These black caps are usually migratory, but the early heat wave has increased insect numbers enough for many to stay. Spring is also a time of fierce competition. This chiffchaff uses a high perch to send his calls far and wide, a warning to rivals and a lure to passing females. Lower down, a robin sings in the understory. Lower still, and a wren is also calling. He has an enormous voice for his size, weight for weight, ten times louder than a cockerel. Mating is also on the mind of these roe deer. In the early spring, they rub their antlers on trees to shed their protective velvet coating, ready for contest bouts in the autumn. And this male must look his best if he is to attract the three females he shares his territory with. The home of the roe deer is on the forest floor, but by mid-May, it's in the canopy that things are moving fast. Nest building has become of vital importance to birds, and these green woodpeckers are doing just that. Their unique toe arrangement and reinforced tail feathers allow them to cling on to vertical surfaces with ease. But they have competition. Great spotted woodpeckers. Slightly smaller, but also looking for nest holes. The two species avoid competition for food by partitioning the way they forage. Greens probe for ants on the ground, while spotted woodpeckers drum on trees for insect larvae. Parakeets are also nesting here, an introduced species they have now spread far and wide across the UK. And they are not above taking advantage of the woodpeckers' hard work either. This time, the green woodpeckers tolerate them, as they provide an effective early warning system against danger. And they have good reason to be cautious. There are predators in this woodland. A little owl. Like the parakeets, a recent arrival on British shores and now widespread. But these nocturnal birds pose little threat to their diurnal cousins. They hunt small rodents and insects in the dead of the night. The greatest danger in these woods is the red fox. Like the deer, this pair are preparing to raise their young. And this female must hunt in order to build up the energy reserves she needs. Luckily, she's a good hunter. Spring is also a time of great change, and nowhere is this more evident than our wetlands. The spring migration is in full swing, with winter visitors departing and the arrival of summer migrants. Wading birds all take similar prey, but they avoid competition by feeding at different depths. Lapwings take invertebrates along the shoreline. Avocets feed at the water's surface, scything their bills to capture small invertebrates. They were driven to extinction in Britain by land reclamation, but now they have returned to our shores. Green sandpipers dabble on the mud surface. Just a little bit below, redshank forage. Black-tailed godwits feed deeper still, 
probing for insect larvae. They've arrived from Iceland and spend their time far out on the estuaries and mudflats. But the deepest feeder is sadly one of the rarest. This is a Eurasian curlew. Curlews are the largest wader in Britain, and their huge beaks allow them to reach insect prey that no other bird can reach. They too were almost driven to extinction, and now are still declining across their British range. And in the wetlands of West England, another visitor can be found. The common crane, which used to live across the country. The dedicated efforts of conservationists have restored the species, and it breeds in the UK once more. Go further inland, and spring is well underway. In South Wales, wildlife is making the most of the quiet, human-free daylight hours. Great cormorants are agile underwater fishermen. But this one might have bitten off more than it can swallow with this European eel. With less people walking the riversides, other residents of the waterways have appeared. Otters. Over lockdown, they have had the banks to themselves and can roam far and wide. Otters rely on scent to communicate. And by sniffing their faeces, they can tell who has passed by. For otter cubs, play is important, and for the first time in a long while, they can play in daylight. For them, lockdown has been a unique opportunity. And the otters aren't the only ones with cubs this spring. Badgers. They only come out at night. To see them, we need night vision cameras to get a glimpse into their lives. These cubs were born in January, deep underground, and are only now exploring the outside world. They're too young to venture far and must be supervised by mum, but they can be quite a handful. Spring is a busy time for this badger family, and the adults spend much of their time collecting fresh bedding. But the cubs are less focused. <laughs> And bothering mum is a favourite pastime. But after a long night playing, it's time for bed. The fox pair have also had a successful year. Their kits are taking their first steps outside the den. All these hungry mouths need feeding and mum is willing to take significant risks to keep her brood fed, like hanging around the badger set after dark. It may be that she is scavenging for scraps, or perhaps she can smell the baby badgers inside. But despite its parents' best efforts, life for young fox cubs is dangerous. A week later, one kit was spotted by the night vision cameras, alone. It's not just foxes who hang around the badger tunnels. Brown rats and field mice live here as well. A whole suite of animals are supported by the ecosystem engineering of just one badger family. And all these rodents attract a host of avian predators. Buzzards, sparrowhawks, and kestrels. In the midday heat, these small raptors dust bathe to remove any parasites in their feathers. And a boom in small mammals has also meant that owls have done well this spring. They've got baby owlets, and they hide motionless in the canopy to avoid detection. As spring gives way to summer, the Forest of Dean is buzzing with animal activity, including from a recently reintroduced species, wild boar. Driven to extinction in England in the 12th century, Accidental escapees and releases mean the Forest of Dean now harbours the largest population in the UK, and now, in mid-July, they have piglets in tow. 
Wild boar are ecosystem engineers. They plough the soil, control forest growth, and help valuable species to colonise new areas. But some fear they may damage controlled landscapes and pose a threat to dogs and walkers. Ecologically, however, they are invaluable, and their presence is revitalising the forest's ecosystem. And other herbivores have done well this spring too. Fallow deer fawns can be seen in the Forest of Dean. And roe deer with twins are a common sight across the Surrey woodlands. The young males have already formed bachelor groups. They are led by the largest and oldest stag. Beneath him, a younger male may be last year's fawn. The youngest are this year's, just growing their first furry antlers. If all goes well, in a few years' time, they too may have young of their own. The Covid pandemic has lasted through summer, and now the arrival of autumn is heralded by the calls of red deer. It is time for the rut. Each year, male deer gather to compete for the females. They've been growing their antlers all year for these contests. By comparing antlers, the stags can tell who's boss without risking injury by actually fighting. This is not true combat. These young fallow males are just practicing for their first jousts. They're watched by a white male He's an albino, and his coloration is caused by a recessive gene building in the population. But for this huge red deer bull, the rut is no game. He has over 20 females and their young to watch over. He'll guard them for the next few months. During the rut, stags don't have time to eat, and he may lose up to a quarter of his body weight during his lonely vigil. He must aggressively see off competitors. These bellows are a challenge, and a lure, as females are attracted to males with the loudest roar. And he has plenty of possible rivals waiting in the wings. But these are youngsters. Too young to hold a harem this year. They will spend the autumn on the edges of the herds and they'll join other stags too small to fight in the fringe forests. It is this male who is the real danger. Only slightly smaller than the big bull, and with a full rack of antlers. As the rut continues, the big male will have to keep an eye on this contender. This has been a year unlike any other, both for people and for wildlife. Animals born in the spring were introduced to a quieter world. Now they must readapt. Amongst all the uncertainty, to see nature recolonizing the landscape is a poignant reminder of the impact we must have on wildlife without ever realizing it. As summer ends and restrictions ease, we must take care not to disturb our natural neighbours. We must all share the responsibility of living alongside nature, not forcing it out. <laughs>